Modern day pop mixes are arguably the most exciting mixes in all of history. The lows are loud and punchy, the highs are breathy and present, and the mids have sort of been left behind. First of all, what does EQ actually mean? What do we mean by low end and mid range and high end? EQ, or equalization, has two meanings. The first being the volume of different frequencies and how they relate to each other, and the second being a device, either analog or digital, which alters that relationship. Lots of people have even used EQs in their day-to-day -day life without realizing. Guitar amps, car radios, home stereos, or even just on Spotify. If we look at one of the top songs from the 1950s, if I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Hired and compare it with, say, Doja Cat, Bitch, I said what I said, I'd rather be famous When we compare the EQ curves, we can see with Doja Cat, there's 29 more decibels of low end at 50 hertz and 22 more decibels at 10 kilohertz. We can also demonstrate this using Ozone's AI auto mastering plugin. Ozone is a plugin which compares your mix to a modern pop mix and changes yours accordingly. When mastering, if I'd have known you were coming out of Baked You a Cake for streaming services, as you'd expect, the lows are turned way up, the highs are turned way up, and the mids are cut. So why is this? Does it just sound better? But then why have mix engineers waited the last 150 years to make this change? 50 years ago, most people were listening on handheld radios, car stereos, and home stereos. In all cases, the quality of engineering did not allow as much low end in the speakers. Mixes with too much low end would have overloaded the speakers, especially in the case of small handheld radios. That, in addition to the interference and noise already present when using a radio, would have made the music near unlistenable. Even our modern phone speakers are better equipped to deal with low-end than most speakers from 50 years ago. That being said, we can still observe the issue with a mix with too much low-end using a phone speaker. I've exported Paint the Town Red with all frequencies below 100Hz turned up by 20 decibels. This is what it sounded like originally. And this is what it sounds like with the boosted low-end. So what about the higher frequencies? Speakers have always had plenty of high end, why only now do mixes have so much high frequency information? The answer to this lies not in the playback, but in the recording process. Traditionally music's been recorded onto tape, a sound which even now many modern recording engineers chase for its warm tone. However, there are several drawbacks to using analog gear, one of which being the noise. The noise floor in a top studio from 50 years ago is significantly higher than even the most affordable modern recording setup. Lots of this noise lies in the higher frequencies. The noise would have been extremely distracting, as can be heard in the AI mastering of If I'd Known You Were Coming Out of Baked You A Cake. Listen again. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. This cake. explains the lows and the highs being turned up, but what about the mids? Why have they been turned down? That is what this video is about, right? At this point, we have to go back to the definition of EQ, the volume of different frequencies and how they relate to each other. Meaning that if the low end and high end is turned up, the mix is louder. And when it's turned down to compensate for this, which all streaming services do, this in effect means the mids have been turned down. So will this trend continue? Maybe. The low end on speakers will continue to improve, but the noise floor now is so low that there's no technological limitation holding back the high end. So how far is too far? For me, in some instances, it already is. In clubs, namely. The piercing high end and the headache inducing low end is too much for me, especially if I'm not wearing earplugs. And there are lots of details in the mid range that are lost because of it. So mixes may continue this way for a while, but they won't forever. When comparing the top songs from each year since 2000, it seems like the trend has already stopped. 